Hey look guys, it's Deltas Fortniter here. Happy Thanksgiving if you live in the United States, or I guess if you celebrate it for some other reason, but I don't think there's really any other reason unless you moved out of the country. Um, but yeah, happy Thanksgiving, and also I guess to the Canadians, happy Thanksgiving like a month and a half ago, or something like that. Um, but this is going to be a sort of a festive kind of tutorial thing on how to create a Thanksgiving uh, Minecraft bucket plugin or spigot plugin, however you want to look at it. And this is not going to be a full-blown tutorial from like the first step, uh, but I will show you it till to the end, like for the plugin working. So um, you may need to watch some other tutorials on how to get some of this stuff set up if you uh, don't already have it set up or you don't really uh, know too much about this stuff and you'd like to follow along. Uh, but the first thing you need to do is download an IDE and I am using Eclipse. You could use IntelliJ, there's a bunch of other ones. I will leave a link to a couple of them in the description, especially Eclipse, because if you'd like to follow along um, the in the easiest way possible, then download Eclipse because then I'll just be, I'm going to be telling you what to click in Eclipse. So. It, it'll just match up better. Uh, the other thing you will need, and this is like the tricky part, um, you will need a bucket or spigot server jar file. And I unfortunately cannot provide that uh, because of like legal reasons, but I will leave a link to instructions on how to get spigot and download it. You don't even really need like the newest version if you can find an older version of it somewhere. I don't know. Not. Uh, don't really have any sources for that, but um, yeah, if you can find like a older version, it's not really gonna be too much of an issue because we're not using anything that's too new or anything like that. Um, but yeah, you have to get that. Once you have those two things, you are ready to begin. If you're having trouble, um, I could point you in the right direction in the comments, and I'll also have links in the description with like some instructions and stuff. So let's begin. You wanna go to File, New, Java Project. We're gonna call this uh, Give Thanks, I think is a good name for it since it's sort of like Thanksgiving. You could call it Thanksgiving if you'd like. But again, if you'd like to follow along exactly as I am doing, call it Give Thanks, it'll make it easier for you. And then just click Finish. There we go, we have our new project. Click this little arrow here, and then you can see we have a source folder. Uh, what you want to do is go ahead and right click it, click New, and then go to Package. And this will be uh, sort of a container for um, our one class that we're going to create. So it's kind of pointless except for the fact that Bucket needs it. So we're gonna create a new package and the naming scheme is usually like me dot, and then maybe your name. I'm just gonna put Delta to front end, you can put your first name or whatever, and then uh, dot com. That'll give us a good Java package. It's sort of like if you had a website, not exactly, but yes. Sort of like that. Then you want to click finish once you have that and you can see it created this new package here. It's white because it's empty. You want to right click it and click new class and this will create the class that uh, we need to put all of the actual code in. So we're going to call it give thanks again. You could call it something else but again for simplicity call it give thanks and then you'll be following along exactly. And then just click finish. And you can see we have a public class give thanks. Now the first thing we need to do before we start coding anything is we need to right click the project and click properties and then go to Java build path and libraries and then click add external jars. And you need to find your spigot or bucket jar file uh, wherever you downloaded that or wherever you have it on your computer and select it. So I have spigot 1.8.8 that's um, not the newest newest version, but it's the newest version of Minecraft. Uh, so we're going to select that and then click open. Again, it doesn't have to be called that. It just has to be a spigot or bucket jar file. And then just click OK. And there we go. So now what that has done is we have all the classes uh, from bucket and spigot. So we can use all of the methods and um, the different functions that these classes that we just imported have. Um, so if we go ahead and I'll go back to our class here. We need to extend, so type extends. Uh, we need to extend Java plugin. And this is a bucket class, uh, which gives us a lot of methods um, and functionality that we need for a plugin. It's required to create a bucket plugin. Uh, and then what you want to do is, if you hover over this uh, Java plugin word, 
you can click import and it will import the uh, location of that class. So it just adds like an import um, line there. Don't worry about that too much right now. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is create. Uh, this is not the most important part, but I like to do it just because it's something that you really should be doing for like most of your plugins if you're creating them. So we want to uh, create a new plugin description file. So um, really we're just pointing to this plugins description, but uh, what you want to do is uh, type plugin description file and we will call it uh, PD file. That sounds good. We know what it is and uh, equals this dot and then get description. You can see it's right here, get description. You can click on it and there you go. It'll come up for you automatically. And then we need to import plugin description file like we did with Java plugins. So if we hover over it and click import, you can see now we have it and the red line goes away. Um, if the red line doesn't go away, then make sure things look like this. <laughs> Don't have too many lines here, so I'm sure you can find the issue fairly quickly. Then what we we want to do is create something that will uh, pretty much just post errors and messages in the console. So uh, this will be a public final uh, logger log. So this is, it's like a, it adds things to the log. That's why it's called a logger and we're going to call it log. Um, and then that equals logger dot get logger. Uh, go to this one that takes one string parameter here. As you can see, it's like, uh, this is like one parameter, two parameters. So um, click this, or you can just type it in, of course. And we want to uh, call it Minecraft. There we go. Okay, so we have our logger there. That'll be useful for um, logging messages. One other thing we need to do with this is create a new method uh, that will actually post the message to the console. So uh, you want to create a new method that is public void. Uh, log message good and that will take a string message so this will actually pass the message from uh, when you call this method it will pass this message to the console which we need to do this dot log and then dot info is just like a general message um, and then we can do uh, this is where this plugin description file up here comes into play so if we do pd file dot get name that will get us the name of the plugin we'll set that in a later like in a few minutes i guess um, but yes get the name of it and uh, just sort of like add a space there so you would do like plus and then space and then get the um, version of it just so that you know what version of it it is uh, because i guess if you had multiple jar files of like the same plugin you'd want to know which one is starting up so get version, right? So it would be, uh, let's say it's called give thanks. It would be like give thanks and then uh, 1.0 or something. That'll be like the first version. Uh, and then after that, add um, a colon to the end of that or whatever. This, is like, this part of it is really not too important, but this is how it will show up in the console. So do it as you would like. And then we're going to add the message to the end. So it'll be like uh, give thanks 1.0 and then colon, and then like enabled or whatever the message will be. Uh, so the next thing is uh, the on enable method. So this is uh, going to need an override annotation here. So uh, don't worry about that right now, but just add it there. And if we do um, create a new public void on enable, so create a new method on enable and create this. Now what you want to do is we're going to use this log message uh, method that we created. So we're going to do uh, this log message, right? And the message will be uh, enabled. So this will tell us when the plugin is enabled. It's just kind of a nice thing. It's not needed, but um, that is there. The on enable method is needed, but the this log message thing is not needed. Um, we will add something there later, but not yet. Uh, then what we want to do is do the same thing. So override and uh, you want to create a new method public void on disable. So this is when the plugin is disabled or when like the uh, for the most part unless you have something that can disable plugins um, just when the server is shutting down then you want to do again this dot log message and we'll do disabled um, there we go 
you can again write that however you would like there in the um, parentheses I mean the parentheses the quotes dear God um, okay so we have our on enable on disable next thing this is this is like the, the big part of the um, plugin so we actually need to add something up here um, it needs to implement so implements and uh, command executors what this does is uh, gives this class the ability to execute commands and we will do that right now actually so we need to create a new method and again override this and what it's this is kind of a long one so you might need to pause the video once I finish typing this line but new method public boolean on command so this is where it gets um, a little complicated so we need to get the sender uh, pass the sender to this method um, we need to take in a the command um, a string and then a an array a string array of arguments so create this you want to do command sender uh, we'll call it sender that's the general uh, thing that people call it then we need a command we're going to call that cmd just command for short uh, and then we have a new string which we're going to call label and a string array which we will call args there we go and we need to import command and command sender and if you press control shift o it will actually import them you may actually have to uh, select one but you want to select org bucket command command and there you go. It'll give you this red line, uh, but if you go ahead and hover over the on command and just click add return statement, we will change this in a moment. Just uh, we want to get rid of the red line just so that it's not not bothering us, not distracting. So um, the first thing we want to do is this method will pretty much just sort of uh, take in like any command that is related to the plugin. So we want to just set it so that only if a player type slash give thanks uh, or we can set that to other things if you'd like but uh, for now it's gonna be slash give thanks uh, will it actually do the command so you want to create an if statement it will be if the command dot get name so that'll get uh, the what the player has typed in uh, so this is like after the slash so if you type slash give thanks it would just Command get name would be give thanks. Uh, so then we want to do dot equals ignore case. So this means that if the player types it in uh, in capital letters or it's like sort of random, it's like give thanks or whatever. Uh, then <laughs> as long as it's G I V E T H A N K S, it'll work. So then you want to type give thanks in here. So that means um, as long as it equals give thanks, no matter what the case is or anything, uh, then we want to get a player so we want uh, this command sender here is useful but uh, we don't really want the console using this at all we just want the players because what we're going to be doing the console doesn't have access to so uh, you want to create a new player we're going to call it player p and then equals and what this is right here you need two parentheses and type player this will cast what we put next uh, to a player and what we're gonna put is the sender so the sender uh, here is a parent class of player so that means it's like higher than the player but like we extend Java plugin this player class uh, extends command sender so if you cast it to a player it's like making it more specific it's it's sort of uh, giving you more options because it knows more about it so uh, if you import the player here you can see we have player so this will create make the sender a player um, as long as the sender is a player now the safer way to do this would be uh, to if you did if sender instance of player and then inside here uh, you would put this player p thing uh, so we can add that actually since i just typed it out but it's really this plugin's not going to be like extremely extensive and perfect but since we just added that it'll be more perfect uh but yes so this will just check uh, if the sender is actually a player and then it will cast it uh, because 
if you cast it and it's not, it'll stop the plugin and it'll cause issues. It'll just it'll just give you an error and it's not it's not good. We don't want errors. Uh, so the next thing we need to create is a string. We're gonna call it message. Uh, you could call it msg. I'm just gonna call it message just because I typed it already. <laughs> um, and then what we want to do is this is gonna be like the happy Thanksgiving message and gold, I guess or orange or something uh, is what we can, the color we can make it. So um, let's do chat color dot gold. I don't think there is an orange, so yeah, we're gonna do gold. Um, and this will actually uh, make the next part of the string gold in the chat. So then we're gonna type happy Thanksgiving and uh, just end it in a semicolon because that's what we need at the end of every line or every statement here. Uh, so this will make Happy Thanksgiving gold in the chat, and that's just gonna be our message. You can change this to whatever you want. That's why we're making it a um, variable here and not just putting it in the uh, like in the bottom, but this is just, it makes it easier to change that if you wanna add it in different places or um, change things, uh, you can just change it right here and then put it wherever you would like. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is another if statement. So we need to make sure that the user has permission uh, to use this. This is again, not really, really that important for this, but it's a good thing to learn. So you want to do if p dot has permission. So this refers to the player p up um, a few lines that we just created. Uh, so just hit enter there. If they have permission and let's just say give thanks uh, dot use so when, if you're using it's like using the thing there's only gonna be one command so that'll make it simple enough so if you're able to use the plugin um, you would need to if you want to be able to use the plugin you would need to have this permission as of right now uh, so in the body of that if statement we're going to need a location uh, this will get the location of uh, the player as well as some other things other secret things down the road, I guess. Um, and then uh, we will need to get um, the world. So we're gonna call this world W, could call it world world to be better better practice, but uh, then we need to uh, get the world from the player. So if you do p.get world, that will get the world from the player. That's That makes sense, I hope, right? So you're like getting the world. If we go ahead and press control shift O uh, and then type org.bucket, uh, and then, or click org.bucket and then org.bucket location. I always click the org.bucket ones, not the MD5 other ones, or like any other Java things for this portion of like all these bucket things, location world. Anyway, wow. Uh, next line, uh, actually we need, hmm, I guess we will. So what my idea for this is what we're going to have happen is it's gonna like spawn a bunch of chickens and then they're gonna like explode or something. I don't know. It's gonna be, it's like turkeys, but there's no turkeys in Minecraft. <laughs> so let's go ahead and import entity again. You could have hit control shift O if you'd like. Um, so what we need to do is we should have like a bunch of chickens or something just spawn in the air. Uh, so let's create a for loop. This will actually, uh, do something like a certain amount of times that we specify. So uh, let's create a for loop. The first thing, first part of this is uh, the variable that we're going to be using to count. So uh, create int i equals zero. So we're gonna start at zero, just count from zero to something. And uh, maybe a reasonable amount of chickens, probably like 10 chickens. So if i is less than 10, so that will give us 10 chickens. It'll spawn 10 chickens. Uh, then you want to add the third uh, portion that is I plus plus. And what this will do is for every time this runs, it will add one to I. So then it actually uh, will only spawn 10 chickens because then if it keeps going, that'll cause a problem. It'll probably crash. So yeah, there we go. Um, we have our for loop. And the first thing we need to do is, uh, I guess we need to each time this is run, uh, we're gonna need to get the player's location because if the player moves, then you know you wanna update it so that they're like, they spawn near the player if, I don't know, they teleport or something. Uh, so location equals uh, p.get 
location you can see right here get location there we go and semicolon and then below that um, hmm okay what we can do is we'll spawn the entity I don't know if I want it to really spawn like on top of them it's kind of okay so let's what we'll do there's a method called uh, dot add for location so if we do loc dot add and then uh, this last one here double x double y double z um, let's just do uh, do it right over the player so zero and hmm, I guess five five to 10, I don't know. You could put, I'm gonna put 10 in here. So this will um, spawn the chicken uh, 10 blocks above where the player is. So it's basically just adding 10 to the Y coordinate for the chicken uh, to this location, I mean, sorry. And then what we wanna do is uh, we created this entity thing here. This is just for like good practice, but you could have created it down here uh, because I don't wanna just keep creating it. So what we're gonna do is do entity equals w so that is referencing the world here dot spawn entity and it's this thing here spawn entity location will be loc right so that's what we set our location to here and then this second argument will be uh, entity type dot chicken so there we go we got our chicken here so that will spawn a chicken at this location in this world here and then um, what we will do this is going to be sort of an advanced thing i kind of want to i don't know if i really want to like force you to create all this i mean you're watching it so you might as well all right so what we want to do is uh, we're going to create a a new entity this is it's kind of weird a weird way to do this, do this but it'll be easier so we're going to um, create a final entity uh, final entity here, let's just call it F entity, right? Okay. And it's going to be equal to entity. It's, it's, this is going to be going to look weird, but it'll make it a little bit easier, I think. So, uh, then what we want to do is, this is probably going to be the most complicated part because it just looks weird. Um, we need to create something that will make them explode or I don't know if make them explode, but make them like disappear or something and like look like they explode, I guess. That would be cool because I don't want it to like actually cause damage or anything. So we're just going to um, create something that will, after a certain amount of time, make them explode. So uh, what we want to do is uh, create a new bucket, bucket runnable, right? Nope, I can't spell. There we go. Bucket runnable, as you would spell it in the English language, right? Okay. And we need to import that. Good. And... Uh, what we want to do is uh, inside this is where you're going to actually have the portion that like runs when the time is up. If that makes that doesn't make sense right now, but you'll see. Uh, so what we need to do is override it again, and we're going to create a public void run, and just open that up here. All right, so we have our run method here, and inside this. Um, as I said, will be like what we're doing when it runs, what it will do when it runs. I don't know why I had such a trouble, such a hard time saying that. But um, and then uh, this is going to be like an instance, but we need to uh, sort of call a method within this object here. So it's going to be um, after this bracket, which is this is where it gets kind of weird. You want to do dot run task later so this is right here not asynchronously but just run task later and for this plugin plugin just do this uh, that's where this java plugin thing comes into play so like it is a plugin because it extends java plugin so we can do this so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, sort of cue this part here uh, to run a few seconds after uh, this runs so let's say maybe like four seconds or three three seconds sounds good three seconds after so one second is equal to 20 ticks so you want to do 20 right here and for ease we're going to do 20 so that's one second and then just multiply it by three uh, so it's just 20 times three 20 is one tick or sorry 20 is 20 ticks but one second so this is in ticks basically is what it's saying and then you multiply it by three so it's three seconds and then 
after three seconds, it will run this run part. And then we need a semicolon just to end it all off there. So where the actual content is going to be is inside here. So what we need to do is use this F entity that we created here and um, do F entity dot get world. So we're going to get the world where this is and then dot play sound. Maybe. Mm, yeah. OK, we'll play a sound. <laughs> Sounds good, I guess, since I already did it. But do F entity dot get location. So we need a location, a sound. And then these two values are uh, the data and pitch or something. I don't remember which order they're in, but it's not really important for what we're doing here. Um, and then the next one is a sound dot. Uh, let's do, is there like an eating sound or something? Eat, wait, oh wait, there's like a burp sound, okay. We'll, we'll do, bur oh yeah, there is, like when you eat. I didn't actually think about that, okay, cool. So we'll do a burp sound, because you know, that's very, uh, Thanksgiving like and then uh, just put a one here and a one here that'll just be like normal values basically uh, so then this is this will play a sound and play like a burping sound and then what we want to do is we're gonna create another for loop uh, because uh, we want to actually create this particle but I've noticed in the past with like particles that you can't really see them very easily unless you make a bunch of them so we're gonna make a bunch of them and if we do um, if we create a new uh, for loop with int i equals uh, zero, and then it's like the other thing. So i is less than ten. I plus plus good. Create the body of the for loop, and then we have f entity uh, dot get world, sort of like what we did up there, and then dot play effect, not play sound, but play effect, and it's going to be this one, uh, this first one here with like three parameters, and uh, give it f entity dot get location and then effect dot um, something like dust or something I don't know or like I don't know I think it would be kind of weird to have it blow up but we could do that is there something else if the smoke things I don't know let's just do like um, where is it uh, wait Splash, spell. What's the thing? I don't know what the thing is that when you like um, throw a splash potion? Don't, I guess maybe splash. Or is that. Or spell. I don't know what it is. Or is smoke. I don't know. Make a decision here. <laughs> Let me see. Um, we could do small smoke. Large smoke. Let's do large smoke. Okay, let's try that out. Hopefully this will show up correctly, but, um, and then uh, let's say 10. I don't know actually what the data value is for that, but we're just gonna say 10 because I think that that is like a larger value <laughs> or something, I don't know. Next thing I want to do is have it like actually drop chicken so that it's not completely pointless to have just like chickens above you at least it will give you something so um, if we do f entity entity wow uh, dot get world right okay and then uh, what we need to do is have it drop an item so like it'll just drop it from the location of the chicken so if we do drop item location will be uh, f entity dot get location and then this item stack thing is where we're going to have it drop chicken or whatever. You can have it drop something else if you'd like. Um, we're going to do create a new item stack. And we're going to pass uh, into this constructor here. Um, I'm just going to do chicken. You could Again, you could do something else, but do material.chicken, cook chicken. Or we could do raw chicken, be mean. But yeah, let's do cook chicken. And then we need to import item stack, this org.bucket.inventory one. Good, okay, so that should drop chicken, I believe. And then uh, if we, I am really bad at this. F entity, there we go, dot remove. Uh, then if we uh, just, so that it doesn't like play this smoke stuff and then have drop a chicken and then the chicken is still there. Let's remove the chicken from the world. So just the chicken will disappear. That is the goal. All right, so that is it for this part here. That was probably the most difficult part I would have to say. Uh, so let's go ahead and go outside this for loop here. You can see if you like go to this bracket that it 
highlights this one so outside of it would be right here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna send our happy Thanksgiving message so do P for player dot send message and just put message in here so that makes it easier so if you want to like send the message multiple times or something like that then you can just do message and then you can change this easily not have to change it everywhere um, so yeah there we go and then uh, if we go ahead and you can see here that there's like it matches up there uh, we need to create well we don't need to but I would say you'd want to create something that if they don't have permission it'll display message so this is another reason I created the message before is uh, so that we can just reuse this variable uh, we're gonna create a message so check color dot red this is sort of like an error message so um, and we'll just say you do not have permission to to give thanks we're gonna just do that <laughs> sounds terrible uh, there we go you don't have permission to give thanks and then uh, and send the message so do p dot send message and then message and uh, this message since we updated it here it'll send this message here instead of sending the happy Thanksgiving because I can't give thanks so no no happy Thanksgiving for them and then uh, all of this is okay so uh, if we go ahead and go out to uh, this like this one bracket here, you can see that it um, highlights this one. So if it goes through all this, we want it to return true, and that pretty much will just not do anything else for the most. Like it won't, if you return false, it'll give you um, an unknown command error, I believe. Uh, but if you return true, then it won't do anything because we don't need it to. We had to do all this. Good. So that's our plugin here. Um, one thing that I was thinking about actually is this location thing I don't want them to all spawn like on each other uh, so if we actually create a new method uh, so what you want to do is you want to go to the second to last bracket here and we're gonna create a new method just to uh, get a random number uh, so if you create new method public int rand int sorry sort of like sped up there um, and it's gonna take in a minimum value and a maximum value that are both integers good so then we need to uh, use this new class that is called a random so we need to create a new random uh, instance of random so um, random random or rand uh, we'll do random um, equals new random right so this is just a class that makes random numbers you need to import it though and uh, we will do uh, create a new integer that is um, it, We'll just call it random num. So it's random number equals random dot next int, and then uh, the way you get a in, like a range or a random value within a range is that's why I use this min max thing. Is you would do uh, the max minus the min, and then um, that's in parentheses, and then add one, and then on the outside of all the parentheses, blah, 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 parentheses add min. Okay, and that is just that'll give you the range. Um, I could explain that for probably many minutes, but I don't know if I could easily. Anyway, then we need to return random number because we want it, like we want to get the random number, right? Okay, and then I'll just copy this so I can don't have to type it, and come back up here where we have uh, this location to add, and where the zeros are, uh, we will put random number and let's say uh, minimum will be zero and maximum will be three so it'll be a minimum of zoop did I okay random int sorry about that uh, you wanna call random int and then um, it will do um, it'll get an integer between zero and three and then it'll add between zero and three to this value so like it'll sort of stagger them a little bit. They won't all be on top of each other. And then we'll do the same for the Z. I could do it for the Y, but but then every time that we actually um, do this, actually no, but yeah, let's just do it for the Z. Might as well stay with it. So just copy and paste that to the same thing, but I do want a different number. It'll just give it some variety. So call it again. It'll create another random integer. And the last thing we need to do is just implement the command. So if you do um, get command and then uh, give thanks, so that'll just get the give thanks command 
Um, it'll just add it as like an actual command that's being used. And then do dot uh, set executor this. And that works because we implement executor, or command executor up here. So there we go. Now we have our command all good to go. The next uh, and hopefully the last thing, as long as everything works, um, thing that we need to do is create a plugin.yml. So if you right click the source here and click new and then file and then type plugin.yml. This is important that it's like this. It has to be exactly like this. And then you want to click finish and make sure it is in your source. And then what I want to do is just drag this over here and you can see that uh, we have this empty file. So what I'm going to do is uh, give it a name. So it's going to be called give thanks. Uh, the other thing that we need to do, I guess, is just uh, give it a the main package. So um, if you do, if you type main, it will be um, what we have here. So it's like me and then um, me dot delta two for niner dot com and then you need to do dot and then the name of the class that we created so give thanks and make sure the casing and everything is all like that it has to be exactly like that and also what we'll do is we'll add a version as well so it'll be version 1.0 and description as well we'll do this um, thanks giving plugin cool and the last thing we need to add to this file is uh, just the command. So if we uh, create a new section here in the YML and do uh, commands and then um, a colon and then go to the next line and do three spaces. Don't use the tab. That was only two, was it? Yeah, okay. Three spaces and then do uh, give thanks since that's the name of our command. Whatever you named your command, you would want to put there. And then new line and add three spaces to it. So it just tabs it in and we'll give it a description. Why not? Um, Thanksgiving command, sure. And then uh, the rest of it's really not necessary. Well, we could really what you'd want to do is you want to add like a usage thing like this and do slash and then two uh, brackets like right there. So it's like a diamond sort of, and then do command. I just put command in the center and then uh, permission would be um, give thanks dot use. And actually, since we're not going to be using any permissions plugins, we should do one more thing. Sorry. Uh, permissions. So it's like commands, but it's like permissions there. New line and then do three here. Uh, actually, what we'll do is we'll copy that to there. Good. So we have give thanks and just add dot use here uh, and remove this usage thing and this permission thing actually. And keep a description and be like, uh, allow allows you to give thanks because it's called give thanks don't you get it good okay so that's the description and then um add this other thing it's called default and just default it to true so that means that everyone has it so that basically what i'm saying is that this is like useless but at least everyone will have it um since we put this in you sort of like need this so um there we go so that's the plugin basically as long as everything works then you want to right click this and click export and then find java and jar file so we have jar file here click next and i will save it on my desktop just for ease uh, call it give thanks uh, it doesn't really this is like really doesn't matter at all but uh, just call it give thanks there and then click finish good and that will export the plugin now you want to go ahead and go to your desktop where we save this plugin or we export this plugin to. And also what I have up is um, a test server that I, it's just like a blank test server that I created just to test out our plugin here. Um, and it just has most of the files. I got rid of some stuff, but um, what you want to do is go into your plugins folder and drag the give thanks plugin into the plugins folder and then go back and run the server. Good, so it'll run this. And once it loads up, it might take a second because Needs to create the world. Hold on. All right, cool. And as you can see that it's done, um, we have, it says enabling give thanks version 1.0. And then it says 
uh, give thanks 1.0 enabled. So that's that message that we added here. Uh, then what we want to do is just open up Minecraft and we're going to test it out. Uh, this is running on localhost, so that means that I can just direct connect to localhost, but if it's not, then you need to figure that out wherever you're running it. And then go to multiplayer, direct connect, and I'm just connecting to localhost. Good. The server you can see we've joined. Um, okay. Interesting. Uh, so if we go ahead and type slash give thanks, you can see that it says happy Thanksgiving, and then there's chickens, and that was actually kind of cool, the smoke thing. I wasn't really sure about that, but, um, and then it drops chickens, which they were all, like, right on top of each other, so, um, just gave us all of them, basically. But if we, if we stand over here, they actually, like, drop, see? They sort of combine, which is all right. You can change that by, like, um making the X and Z values that they, that the chickens spawn at, like wider, and then they won't, the objects won't combine, or combine, the items won't combine, I mean. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's it. That's like, it's pretty basic. It's kind of, I mean, whatever. It's just like random floating chickens in a large explosion thing. Um, I can't hear the sound, so I don't actually know if that's working, but it should be, because it's not giving us an error. Uh, I just don't have my sound on my headphones right now. So yeah. That's really it. Uh, that was a pretty long video, but I hope you learned something or you found it interesting. If you're still watching, if you are still watching, then type in the comments. I don't know. Crazy Thanksgiving exploding chickens. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> type it in the comments below. If you did find this enjoyable or helpful, um, a like and a share would be greatly appreciated. And also make sure you subscribe for more gaming tutorials and reviews. Every Saturday and Sunday, this is sort of like a bonus video, so maybe more than every Saturday and Sunday. And uh, yeah, also if you're not following me on Twitter, haven't liked the Facebook fan page, you're not following me on Google+, Plus. those links are down in the description below for you to follow me and stay updated. And that is all, thanks for watching, have a happy Thanksgiving if you celebrate, if not, have a great day, and uh, that's all. Goodbye.